This is the first of a set of videos looking at the exams from last year, or excuse me, exams from 2020. I expect that as I go forward, we'll be doing more of these videos just to help out and sort of provide additional assistance. And generally, one of the things that's important is not necessarily to study every exam because every exam has sort of a different uh, flavor. Uh, it's to understand what we're looking for. What are the topics that we feel are important um, and why are they important at this stage? So this is the last exam that was offered in um, in-house. So the students actually all wrote it at the exam center at U of T. And the next two exams, uh, March and final exam, were offered online. So there's a slight difference here. Uh, so question one, um, CN Tower has an elevator that travels 346 meters from the ground to the observation deck. The elevator starts from rest, has a maximum velocity of 22 kilometers an hour, and decelerates to rest when it reaches the observation desk. So you know it starts at zero and ends at zero. Magnitude of the acceleration is uh, plus minus 0.3 g. So it's got to be roughly about three meters per second squared. What is the time for the elevator to accelerate from rest to its maximum velocity, 22 kilometers an hour? How long does it take for the elevator to reach the observation deck from the ground? And so, so what is the time for the elevator to accelerate from rest to its maximum velocity of 22 kilometers an hour. And what you're asked to answer this is in seconds. And so you get H equals 346 meters. Okay, that's fine. Um, but you also have to recognize that that 22 kilometers an hour is pretty useless. And so the, the way to deal with it first is to convert that to meters per second. And I've done that directly. You can do that also, uh, but it's 6.1 meters per second. I'll leave the acceleration as 0.3 G. The velocity of the elevator then is just going to be the initial velocity of the elevator plus the acceleration of the elevator, which is that 0.3 G and the time. And I also know that this term right here, because it starts from rest, is zero. So the time for acceleration is 2.1 seconds. Um, and here really what we're looking for is unit consistency and an understanding of how to use the constant acceleration relationships. So in terms of what's happened so far, that's time, that's velocity. The elevator has done this. It's gone to its 22 kilometers per hour, starting at zero, and it's linear. I know that because it's a linear equation. How long does it take for the elevator to reach the observation deck from the ground? 346 meter. And again, you're asked to answer this in, in, in seconds. So we know the acceleration in time. We can use sort of displacement. And so, um, in terms of displacement from going from 22 or zero kilometers an hour to 22 kilometers an hour, it's just going to be twice constant acceleration times the distance traveled. So it does that in 6.3 meters. So in terms of what's happening, over 6.3 meters, it does that, and about two seconds, it um, reaches its maximum velocity. So that's at 22 kilometers an hour. Next, the elevator is going to travel at a constant velocity. And so it has to travel for a constant velocity until it needs to decelerate because you don't want the passengers to get out at 22 kilometers an hour. You want them to get out at zero. So you go from 22 and you go to zero again. And that takes the same 2.3 seconds that we had before. And it's also the same distance, 6.3. So 6.3, 6.3 at either end. And the remaining distance is just going to be uh, 333 meters. So the time at constant velocity is 54.4 seconds. Uh, car accelerates and decelerates. Uh, so total time that this is gonna occur is the time it takes for it to go over the first, then the second, and it's going to be a total of 58.69 seconds. And if you do a constant acceleration, or so sorry, 
in terms of what we want you to know, we want you to know how to apply the constant acceleration equation. And you also have to understand that you have to bring the elevator to zero velocity. That's the difference between mathematicians and engineers. We need to sort of make sure that there is a bit of realism here. Actual time is 58 seconds, so pretty much spot on in terms of times. This is a bit more complex and it required a lot more uh, operation in terms of uh, or understanding what's going on. At the bottom of a loop in a vertical plane, an airplane has a horizontal velocity of 50 to 520 kilometers an hour and is speeding up at a rate of 12.6 kilometers per minute squared. Radius of the curvature of, loop, uh, the, curvature of the loop is given here as 2.5 kilometers and this is being traced from this origin at O. At the instant shown, what is the uh, plane's radial and theta velocity, VRV theta, R dot, theta dot, and the tangential and ex uh, normal acceleration, ATAN. So first we want to know the distance, R uh, from O to the plane. And we're given enough information that at this point it's 520 meters and 350 meters up. So total distance R is 626.8, and the angle that defines theta is 33.9 degrees. I can get that directly from geometry. So if I look at this, I know that the plane is traveling at 520 kilometers per hour. And if I do the conversion, I'll end up with 144 meters per second or that's sorry, kilometers per hour, 144 meters per second. I know theta from the previous slide is about 33 degrees. And so I can then break it up into its R and theta terms. And if I do that, I can extract out what R dot for the plane is. That's just uh, 119.8 meters per second with respect to R. Theta dot is just going to be V theta divided by R, and that's just going to be minus 0.13 rads per second. If I then solve for the remaining terms, I was already given um, that this is 12 kilometers per minute squared, and that ends up being three and a half meters per second squared. Acceleration tangential is tangential to the curve. Remember that that is acceleration tangential. Acceleration normal <clears throat> is with respect to the loop. And so if I do that, V squared plane divided by R or 8.35 meters per second squared. Remember total velocity and acceleration are always the same. It, all we're doing is trying to break it up into different components, X, Y, R, theta, and T. So remember your equations, remember how you solve these terms, and then you'll be fine. But remember that you're not trying to create new velocities, new acceleration. You're just describing the same thing differently. Unit consistency, constant acceleration equations, R theta, NT, XY relations. And uh, uh, finally, and I can't stress this enough, at this point in the course, never submit anything without a diagram on it. The course requires math and physics, and really you, you need to understand that. I'm not sure how we're gonna do the course this year. It depends on what's happening in terms of decisions. But one of the things that you should be aware of is start writing a crib sheet so that you're aware of things. If we go with an open book test, you'll have a crib sheet to sort of uh, base your decisions on as well. If, you, if we don't, then you'll have a crib sheet ready to go. And we do provide uh, an example crib sheet that you may find useful. Thank you, and we'll talk again.